so there are types of rights that are not alienable property rights. There are types of rights which we call personal rights, and uh, that's what you have in a democracy is a personal right. You qualify for voting in state elections by living in that state or residing in that state. You qualify to vote in municipal elections because you reside in that municipality, et cetera, et cetera. And those rights are not for sale. And and uh, the free market ideology that accepts no limitations on what can be bought and sold was actually ruled out uh, in the 13th Amendment that abolished slavery because slavery, it abolished voluntary slavery as well. And uh, you cannot sell yourself in slavery. And what we're arguing for here is saying that the same prohibition should go against renting yourself out or being employed by somebody else as a rented person. So that's the deeper moral argument. And and so the uh, free market people, if if you really take that ideology seriously, should allow people to sell themselves into slavery. And there's been plenty of contemporary libertarians that actually argue that. So uh, we oppose that as the abolitionists oppose that. And, and we call ourselves neo-abolitionism because we're saying you should also uh, the legal system should also not validate a contract to rent yourself out. And that's what the employment contract is. It's not it's not even controversial. It's an unusual to use the word rent rather than say hire, because we say we rent a car, but we hire a person. But you go to England, and a rental car there is called a hire car. Hiring and renting are the same thing. They're selling the services of something rather than selling the thing itself. And that's what happens in the employment contract is you rent yourself out. You don't sell yourself. You rent yourself out. So the moral argument is saying that should be prohibited, just like selling all your labor at once. A voluntary slavery contract should also be prohibited uh, by the legal system. And that's why we're neo-abolitionism. We want to sort of complete the work of the abolitionist and not apply that sort of contract to human beings that you cannot sell or rent. A human being, you can only do that to things. So that's our answer to the libertarians. And there's a long intellectual tradition I've written about for 40 years about which contracts should not be recognized as valid. And the slavery contract was one. The uh, coverture marriage contract, which was the old system of marriage, was where you, the wife's independent legal personality was abolished. She could not make contracts her own except the name of the husband. That's been abolished by the Married Women's Property Acts uh, in in the Western countries. You can still do it in Saudi Arabia, of course. And uh, the other sort of contract that's been abolished is um, a voluntary contract to be give up your right to govern yourself. If you try to uh, you know, organize your local city or town into a uh, monarchy or a, a government where you you voluntarily gave up the right to uh, govern yourself to some corporation or some king or some leader, that would not be recognized as that would be considered unconstitutional and outlawed. So those sorts of contracts, the coverture marriage contract, the non-democratic constitution, or the self-enslavement contracts are all uh, invalid you know, in our country. And, and uh, we are arguing that the contract to rent yourself out it's in the same category. It's just a shorter term contract and selling all your labor all at once. You sell it piecemeal. It's the same idea that you're alienating some aspect of your personhood and being treated as a rented thing on the job. And that should not be legally allowed. So the libertarians that are constantly saying, well, you know, why should you be free? To that? Well, that, that means you should be free to sell your governance rights. Uh, your voting rights. You should be free to sell yourself all your labor at once. You should be free to enter in whatever marriage contract you want where you you uh, alienate your legal personality in favor of your husband. And yet we don't allow any of that. So they just ignore that in their rather simple-minded argument. That, well, why can't you rent yourself out if you want to? So again, just to to kind of respond to that arch anarcho-capitalist voluntarist perspective where the ideal of human relationships should be you know everybody should be completely free to do whatever they want um you know i can imagine that there would be people who would say you know if you want if you're a free individual and you want to sell yourself into slavery 
you should be free to do that. I mean, yeah. um, you should no, be free that, to, to commit suicide. You should be free to do anything no, to harm yourself that wouldn't be hurting somebody else. See, they don't even understand the question. If you want to uh, act slavishly vis-a-vis -vis another person, you know, you can put on a dog collar or leash and you can follow around them like their dog or whatever you want. That's There's no limitation in this theory about what you can do personally between consenting adults. The limitation is what the legal system can legalize. So if you want to act slavishly with respect to somebody else or a woman wants to act slavishly with respect to her husband, that's maybe a poor choice, it may be a poor judgment, but don't ask the legal system to validate a contract that says that's your legal role. That's the problem. And anarcho-capitalists, libertarians, don't even understand that. They act as if we're saying, well, you can't go around and act like somebody's slave. If you want to act like somebody's slave, go ahead. But don't ask the legal system to turn that into a valid contract. That's the point. You know, the Emancipation Proclamation did not abolish people going, being sedio masochist or <laughs> acting like they're somebody's dog. It changed the legal system so that would not be a legal contract. And they don't even understand that. They keep saying, oh, you're limiting my freedom. Oh, you, if you want to act like somebody's slave, go ahead. But don't ask the legal system to say that's a valid contract and don't ask the legal system to enforce it. So what should be our guidepost for what is a legal contract or acceptable contract and what is an unacceptable contract? Well, it's the whole idea of what can you alienate. In fact, if, if you own a car, you can, you know, rent the car to somebody else, you can turn it over to somebody else and they can drive it independently of you or, or if you want to, you know, any, any sort of item, any sort of thing like that, then that can be evident. But when you say, I'm going to rent myself out, well, how do you separate, you know, your actions from yourself? It's, it's, those are, in fact, uh, inalienable. And that's the reason why, for example, fraud becomes obvious when you consider the case of a hired criminal. If if you have a you know employer employer and employee and the employer says okay the employee you know, let's go rob a bank and and uh, uh, let's rent a car or rent a van to there's a getaway car but the van owner you know knows nothing about any of that because the van owner can alienate the van not be involved but the employee uh, is automatically involved inexorably and the court would say uh, you were in fact uh, agreed to that, do that, and you did that, uh, rob the bank or commit a murder or whatever it is, and uh, so you're both jointly uh, legally responsible. And our point is when the contract is not criminous, the contract is normal kind. Do workers suddenly become robots uh, who don't have that same responsibility? Of course not. But then the law says, oh, now you've got a contract, and no crime has been committed in the course of this contract, therefore it's valid, therefore we enforce that the product and the management rights all belong to the employer, et cetera, et cetera. So the fraud is right out there in the open. It was the same with slavery. When slaves committed crimes, suddenly they became persons, <laughs> and they were held liable for their crimes. And uh, it, the rest of the time, they were legally things. So that's the sort of institutionalized fraud that was there in slavery, and that's the institutionalized fraud that's there in this human rental system that neoabolitionism is trying to abolish. So that's is it a contract where you can actually fulfill it by alienating whatever it is you're selling or renting out? Or is it a contract where actually you, you know, like in the, in the coverture marriage contract, the woman still remains a, a full adult woman, yet she's legally treated as if she's incapacitated like a child and cannot own property or, or make contracts in her own name. That's just a fraud. They cannot turn themselves into children voluntarily to fulfill that contract, just as I cannot turn myself voluntarily into a thing to be rented by somebody else. So that's the criteria. Is it a contract to alienate some aspect of your personhood, being a person, or is it a contract to alienate a thing? It's a person-thing distinction. And, and uh, when we abolished slavery, we got sort of halfway there. <laughs> you can't own another person, but you have to rent them. And we're trying to complete that and say no. The whole notion of renting and owning other people should be abolished. That only should apply to things. 